Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Let's Talk Kashras, presented by the Kashras Awareness Project in conjunction with Torah Anytime. Today, I am privileged to be joined by Rabbi David Cohn, Administrative Rabbinic Coordinator at the CRC, the Chicago Rabbinical Council. Thank you, Rabbi Cohn, for joining us. Great to be here. I'd like to talk about a timely topic uh, with the approach of Pesach, and that is matzah. Uh, and specifically, hand matzah, most of Kalal Yisrael, I assume, uh, or at least a, a, a large majority, use hand matzah for the Sedarim and for Pesach. And uh, a matzah bakery is, is a complex place when it comes to doing things on the highest level of Hidr. And so walk us through if you were designing a bakery or you were being consulted, and I know you have been consulted, you visited many matzah bakeries uh, over time, as to how to avoid chametz. And uh, a lot of that is related to avoiding excessive heat in the bakery and things like that. Walk us through what you would say is your checklist uh, when you want to certify or advise a hand shmura matzah bakery. Okay, so everybody knows the rule that if you mix flour and water together and it sits for 18 minutes, it becomes chametz. That's the basic rule. Everybody knows that basic rule. The, the detail to that rule is that that 18 minutes is only assuming the matzah is at room temperature. If the matzah gets heated up, particularly during the process of the, the kneading and the working with the dough, if it gets heated up, then the amount of time is less than 18 minutes. We don't know how much it is less than 18 minutes, so the Shulchan Aruch says you shouldn't let the matzah set, even rega echad, even for one second in between. And once mm-hmm. it starts working with it and it starts to get heated up from your hands and, and the rolling of it, then you shouldn't let it sit at all. So in the, in the matzah bakery, in order to avoid the chametz, in order to avoid the dough from becoming chametz, we, we take different parts to, to avoid this problem. One part is we avoid heat. Okay, I'm going to give some, just some headings first. We're going to avoid heat. And the second thing is we say is no breaks. Always have the dough being worked because as long as you're working with the dough, it doesn't become chametz. The Gemara says you can let the dough, you can work with the dough all day long, way more than 18 minutes. As long as you're working with the dough, we call ASIC. As long as you're working, with, work, work, ASIC, working yeah. with the dough, like mix, moving it and you know, more seriously moving it around, mm-hmm. then it doesn't become chametz. So one part of what we do is we avoid heat. I'll explain some details of what that means. Mm-hmm. Another part we do is we say, don't let it ever sit. Always make sure we have an ASIC. And the last part that we're going to deal with is make sure we don't have things left over for more than 18 minutes. We clean well between batches to mm-hmm. make sure we don't have leftovers. So let's go through those details. For avoiding heat, there are two halachas that most people wouldn't guess on their own. They're not so intuitive. You might not think of. And one is um, certain types of sunlight cause heat in the matzah bakery. Sure. So, so the, the, and, but, but you wouldn't guess. It has to do with shady days and sunny days. Very uh-huh. un, unusual dinim. So as a rule, in a matzah bakery, there's no windows for that reason. There's no windows. It's true. It's, it's true. Yes. You well, actually, I was in once in a matzah bakery and there yeah. were windows. We were like, guys, no, no, you got to cover the windows uh-huh. because on the wrong day, if it's a little too, too a cloudy day, if it's done wrong, it's going to mess up the bakery. So there's no windows in a matzah bakery. Okay. Another thing is, there's something called Maim Shalano, uh, which is, the water that's going to be used in making the matzah is drawn the day before, uh, usually shkia time. Uh, you draw the water the day before and you let it sit in order to make sure that it gets to cool off also, get to room temperature before you use it also. Mm-hmm. Um, in that case, there was, we were once at a bakery where they did that. They took the mime at the right time and they left it. It was in a very, it was in a warm climate. They took it and they left it in the car outside, in the tank, outside, in this <laughs> boiling hot sun. Guys, you missed the point. Right? It's supposed to be getting to room temperature. Right? So right. They missed the point there also. Okay. And then another related thing is the flour, if you mill the flour, if you grind the wheat into flour, it also has to sit also before you could use it in making it because the grinding itself builds up heat into it. Right. Okay. So those are the things that, like halachic things that you might not have thought of. But then there's obvious is that in a bakery, in a bakery, there's an oven. Okay, so we're trying to avoid heat. There's a burning hot oven. One I was in, they told me it's 1,000 degrees, 950 degrees. Okay, so it's right. boiling hot. So there's the, the room that has the oven is obviously going to be hotter than other places. So uh, matzah bakeries will put in fans and air conditioning in order to avoid heat in the other parts, as much as they can to avoid heat. Okay, so one of the toys that I use, I have a little thermometer, and I stick the thermometer on the wall r- right outside the oven room. Uh-huh. Okay, and I say, let's see how hot it is outside, right outside the oven room. And in most cases, in modern places, they do a really good job. To keep it cool. Fans and air conditioning in all the right spots, and it'll be 70 degrees in the other, in the other room. It's perfectly, no, 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 you don't feel any heat coming through from there. Um, they're doing a good job. And then the last, some last parts is that 
you want to make sure you bake your matzahs thoroughly. Because if you stick them into the oven, imagine if you stick it into the oven and it doesn't bake, well then when it comes out of the oven, it's very hot and it's going to turn chametz in a second. Mm-hmm. Okay? So you make sure you bake it thoroughly. That's why we check for kfulas and the fulchas, no folded over matzahs and right. no bubbles in the matzahs. And why we make holes in the matzah also. All of that is to make sure it bakes thoroughly. Mm-hmm. This is all because there's going to be heat. And once we have heat, we're going to, we're going to have a problem if we don't bake it within 18 minutes. Mm-hmm. Okay? So that was our first part is we make sure there's no heat. We, we, we minimize the heat as much as we can to avoid so that the chametz doesn't happen faster. That mm-hmm. was part one. Part two is we want to make no breaks. I told you the Shulchan Aruch says we should have no... A few rega echad. The Mishra says, okay, it's, it's an exaggeration. It can't mean one second. I mean, literally one second to not have ASIC. I mean, that's like impossible. Right. How are you going to do that? Um, so in order to do that, there's a couple of things that have to be done. The first is, again, the Shulchan Aruch says, when you make your uh, dough for making matzah, you should use a very small amount of flour. Okay, the amount you should have is less than a shir kala. Mm-hmm. And that's the point is, you have a smaller batch, it's easier to work with. Imagine right. you have 50 pounds of dough, it's hard to work with. You have to, to do a lot of ASIC with right. a lot of dough. So, right. so he says you should listen to shir challah. Okay. Now, what's interesting about that is, the shir challah, many people know, is that there's two shir challahs. There's an amount, I'll say two and a half pounds, that we mafresh challah, and then like four and a half pounds of flour that we mafresh with a bracha. Because right? mm-hmm. there's a question, how much is the right shir challah? Mm-hmm. So, if it's done correctly, means is you have less than a shir, means less than two and a half pounds. But some bakeries don't do that. Some bakeries say, no, no, as long as I have less than the bigger shir challah. So that's a differentiation between this bakery versus that. The Shulchan Aruch says you should use less than a shir challah. Um, and how much do they count as their shir challah? One bakery says, yeah, three and a half pounds. Our batches have three and a half pounds. Well, that's not less than a shir challah according to everybody. If mm-hmm. you make that at home, you would do hafrasha without a bracha. So that's a differentiation between some and the other. Okay. And then, but then to more, so to speak, practical is that we... We, ne- we want the dough to never sit any place, okay? We want the dough to always be someone working with it. It should never be stuck someplace mm-hmm. waiting for the next person to do what they have to do. And part of, that is, part of that is the setup, and part of that is the personnel. What I mean by personnel is, is that if, let's say, when they roll out, one of the steps in making, chal- uh, making matzah is you end up with a long roll, or like a long, looks like a long roll of dough. Right. You cut it into pieces, right. and then those pieces, they divvy each, it up, one, they give each it out. piece will become one matzah. Right. Okay? Well, if they made this long roll and they're not ready to give it out, that personnel means that someone says, hey, I need to do ASIC on this because they're not ready for me yet. Not to say I did my job, pay it to the next guy, out. and too bad on him. No, no, no. For whatever reason, there's a, there's, it's not moving on from here, someone needs to do ASIC. So that's, mm-hmm. that's the, the, the people in the, in the bakery. That's to do a training, right? They have to be trained yes, properly. And they have to be... People, people who work in factories tend to be focused on their job. Mm-hmm. This is what I do. This is all I do. But over here, we need someone to have a little bit broader vision and be able to say, hmm, over there we have a problem. Let's go over there. Let's have a spare person mm-hmm. who can go there who can make sure the dough doesn't just sit where it's supposed to be. Um, uh, another thing is that we, we want to make sure that the, the people are in sync with each other so that th- we don't have the, the one side of the factory working faster than the other one if we do, that's going to automatically mean someone's going to be stuck with those sitting someplace that no one's using them. Um, <clears throat> so, <coughs> in one bakery, in one bakery, what I mentioned before about people doing ASIC when there's a problem, one bakery had a very interesting setup, which was that the person rolling those doughs into these like logs, if I could call them mm-hmm. that, logs, mm-hmm. in most bakeries, what happens is when he's finished his job, he passes on to the next person who cuts, etc. In this bakery, the people, he never passed it on. They requested from him. Uh-huh. When they were ready for it, and you keep working that dough. It doesn't need it from the, from, to make the dough ready for, for baking, but you keep working with it till I tell you. Is that the right. guy who has this big like bar? <laughs> that's, that's one guy. Thing, that's I'm, one. I'm talking a step past oh, him. Step past, okay, okay. Well, let's go through some of the steps. Okay. The first step is they mix flour and water. Right. Then, and someone makes it into the first basis of a ball of dough. Right. Then it goes to the guy with the big bar, like you right. described, who's banging, who's doing the Bang next hint. kneading. Right. He's doing a very, it's a really hard job. It's hard, it's very a hard, hard. Very hard job. And he's, he's kneading it into, and when he's finished, he, he comes out with a, a, a better, a better fully, dough, kneaded, right? fully, fully kneaded, kneaded dough. dough. Then somebody else rolls it into a log. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then if a log gets cut into pieces. Right. Okay. So what happens is at each one of those steps, instead of each guy doing his job and then passing it to the next one, each person requests from the person beforehand. So let's say your guy with the log, with, with a big pole banging it, or the person who's going to cut each one doesn't get it. He asks, he says, okay, I'm ready for another one. So mm-hmm. you keep doing what you were doing until I'm ready to take it from you, which that's a way of making sure that dough doesn't sit. 
because everyone's requesting it rather than being given it when they're not ready for it yet. They can't handle it yet. Uh, and so, as I was saying, we need the people have to be in sync. We, if the people are too fast on one side and and they're not they're ahead of the other people, then like the guy's ready to mix new flour and water, but the people next to him are not ready to take it yet. Mm-hmm. So we, we're going to end up with with the problems of it. Okay, and other places where we have problems are the the very so to speak the last step. Okay, it means it's right before the the, flour, the the matzah goes into the oven. There's what's called the redler, the person who makes the holes in it. Mm-hmm. So what's happening is people are giving him matzahs that are ready to go into the oven. That guy. Put, that person puts holes into it. He makes holes in, in the matzah, and then they stick it onto a pole, and it goes into the oven. What, th- what happens is that not everyone's finishing matzahs at, right away. Let's say the pole could hold five matzahs on it. So he gets one, and now he gets another one, and now he gets another one. So what happened to the first ones that he got? They're just sitting there. It's sitting on the pole. It just, it's, it's either on the pole or on his, or on table, his, on his table, waiting for him to put it onto the pole. Mm-hmm. So over there also, in some bakeries, it just waits. Just wait around until until we have enough. We do, let's say we do five until we have five to ready to go. And other places they say no, no. As soon as we get one or two, if the other ones are not coming, we'll just put them in. We don't mm-hmm. want to wait. We don't want to wait around. So we right. will will give up on the sort of speak, efficiency of the oven. The oven should get five at a time because we want we don't match it just to sit there. Sit so we want we want things to get moving. Is it would it help if someone is or some of the matzahs are being shaken on the sticks so that at least they're not stagnant? So there are different levels of ASIC. Mm-hmm. Um, that probably doesn't count for too much. Uh-huh. Uh, to get real, th- there's different levels. And Mishnah talks about some ASIC is worthless. Some ASIC pauses the, the, the time. Uh-huh. And some ASIC restarts the 18 minute clock. Got so it. the more ASIC you do, but you could do something, yes, but, but there's a limit to how much you could do. Shaking the pole, that, that, I don't think it's going to uh-huh. do much to you. Um, but then even in the, putting it into the oven, in most bakeries, they have one person puts it in and a different person puts it out. This way, the person putting it in, he only has to just keep putting dough. He just keeps putting stuff in. Uh-huh. As opposed, if he's the same guy taking out, then he's not ready to put things in because he's busy taking out. Right. So by switch, by splitting those jobs, then we're, we're taking more people, but we're again we're avoiding dough ever sitting. Okay. And that that's there's all these different types of places we're watching to say at each spot we want to make sure dough doesn't sit. Okay. Uh-huh. Right. And the last part of what we do is cleaning. That is between batches. Um, every 18 minutes, everyone stops what they're doing. And they clean up. Okay, so what do they do to, to clean up to be ready? We're cleaning up because we don't want dough from this batch to be in the next batch because they'll have sat for more than 18 minutes. Mm-hmm. So one great thing is the places that have um, doubles and triples of each piece that's going to be used. So let's say the part that makes the holes, we call the red ones. If they have three of them, uh-huh. that means is I have the whole 18 minutes while this batch is going on to clean one that I'm going to use in the next 18 minutes from now. Got it. I don't have one minute to clean it between one batch and the next. Right. I have a long time. If I have three, four of them, then I have, I have all the patience in the world to clean it as thoroughly as I need to. It's very right. dirty. It's hard to get them right. clean. I have as much time. I have poles. People are rolling the rolling dough. pins. Rolling how many pins. rolling pins? Well, if we have exactly how many we need, that's a problem. Everyone's got to be clean in that one minute between batches. Right? The, 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 the boss is trying to get us to work faster. Right? He wants <laughs> us to go right back to work. Right. But if we have if we have doubles and triples, then we have plenty. To, we have time to go. Then we have people who put on in lots of bakeries now. Instead of washing their hands between batches because dough gets on your hands, they have disposable gloves. Mm. Uh, so that makes things work. We don't have to worry about me cleaning. Okay, I don't, I don't, wear, people wear aprons, disposable aprons. They switch their aprons between them. Mm-hmm. Um, I should have mentioned, um, most places won't let people bring phones or other devices into the machine because if I get a call or I want to change the music on my thing, I'm, I'm stopping. Gonna leave, no, I'm going to leave dough someplace. Oh. So I put my hand in my pocket to change the, the song, so I'm going to leave dough on, I'm going to leave dough on my thing, and then to, five minutes from now, I'm going to touch it again, I'm going to put that piece back onto my thing. Mm-hmm. Um, people who use wooden rolling pins, they'll sand them in between. There's all different kinds of things. That, the cleanliness, to make sure we did a really good job, so when we, that we don't have leftover from one batch to the next batch. So I want to touch on that. You mentioned the wooden rolling pins. It's interesting, because I, I remember visiting various matzah bakeries, and I remember a very, very mohoder dick operation, where they were very proud of, of every component of the process. But I noticed that they were using metal rolling pins, and when I asked them about it, they said, yeah, because metal rolling pins are much easier to clean than wood is. Wood, you either have to sand it down, or it's much easier for the dough to adhere to the wood, whereas the metal rolling pins, they, they clean it, and obviously they didn't have one, one uh, set, they had several sets, but I pointed out, and I wonder what you feel about the fact that metal conducts 
electricity it conducts war you know heat, heat and since it conducts heat really it may be yatsaskar bef seder where you're losing by the metal yes it's cleaner but it's conducting heat compared to wood which does not what, what do you right. feel about that so it's it's a good question it's a trade-off you, you're, you're looking at you're trying to say is what's going to make me my best matzah what's um, what's going to make it mean the least chance of becoming the comments mm-hmm. so for sure my zaidi used wooden poles right, that, right. That, 100 years ago they were using wooden poles but when so stainless steel, that's a it's a toss up. Should I get cleanliness, right. or should I worry I'm going to get a little more heat? Mm-hmm. It's it's really a toss up. Most people prefer metal, but right. that doesn't mean everybody. And it's a the, it's the Rav Machshe's call now. It says, what would I rather? If I mm-hmm. use the wood, it's harder to clean. Uh, or do I use the metal? I won't have heat. But the interesting thing, I'm telling you, I tried it. I took a metal rolling pin, I rolled it, and you you really feel. I felt it. I right, felt right. so, but I would tell you about the. I felt some of the warmth in, in the wood. In the wood, okay, I'm good with that. But yeah. I would tell you something. In the wooden, um, not only do we have to clean every eighteen minutes, the, even in the middle of a batch, uh-huh. we get dough stuck to. So I, right, I, I, again, I watched the bakery, and in this bakery, the people who were doing the rolling had, on top of like at eye level, they had wooden pins. I said, why do they have so many wooden? They were switching pins within. So they said, minutes? in the middle, in the middle, really? if they notice a piece of dough gets stuck onto the thing. They, they throw the pole out and they get. They have another one. A to fresh down. one. They have a fresh one. Wow. So those people, we were trying to overcome this problem. Right. But they, if you think about, it, they had to have hundreds of sure. poles, sure. and they have to have a mashkiach who can now check them all because each one that has to be cleaned in between means someone needs to check it and, right. and approve it to be used again. So, but that, but they were trying to do like you said. They're avoiding heat by using metal mm-hmm. wood, but then they had other problems. You know, so so Got it's it. a toss up. Uh, toss up. Uh, and all that. Uh, so the, really, the avoiding chametz in all these points, not just for your point, in all these points is really depends on having a good system. Uh-huh. We need to have a good setup, and we need hashkacha who keeps an eye on things. Uh-huh. Who the mashkiach is, who makes sure that things run the way they're supposed to. Who notices that things are wrong. Who notices that after a month of people making matzah, they're slipping. They're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Who keeps people in line and that the system should keep running the way it's supposed to. Um, and then, you know, each one, it depends on how well it's done. You know? Got it. Fascinating. Thank you so much. Sure. Appreciate it. <laughs>